So back on Power BI, our desktop, the first thing that you need to do here is get data. So I'm going to click on Get Data, and in this case, I'm pulling from my Dynamics GP. So I'm pulling from a SQL Server. It's going to ask me what's my SQL Server, so I'm going to identify that. And I know that this is my computer and my GP instance that I have running. And then the database that I want. And because I'm using Fabricam, I know my database is two. And I'm going to have my data connectivity where you can do an import or a direct query. And in this case, I'm just going to do an import. And that's going to go through and pull the available data. So I am going to, from this list, go down and I'm going to find uh, sales line items. And that's going to give me a number of different, well, quite a few different tables. So it's going to give me customer information, it's going to give me sales information, and it's going to give me item information. So I'm going to go down and grab my sales line items. There we go. So I'm going to choose sales line items, and this is just going to tell me, or show me rather, an example of that data. So I'm going to see the, the top type, item number, the description. I'm going to be able to scroll over and see extended costs and prices, unit costs, customer information. And that'll give me a place to start as far as what I want to see on my dashboard. So I'm going to let that load. And it does take a little bit, depending on the amount of data that you have. And it's almost completed here. So once this data loads, we're going to see all of the fields on the right side of the window. The middle section of that pane is going to give us the ability to change what kind of graphs we want to see, whether it's bar graphs or pie charts. The different graphs are all listed there. We have ability to change colors and make things um, very colorful depending on what we want to do with this. And then we'll have the ability as well to do filters on our data. So the first thing that we're going to do is Let's pull our customers, and then we want to see maybe extended prices along with that. So I'm going to scroll down in the fields that are available. And this is the, what's available based on the data that we pulled. So I'm going to get my customer name, and I'm just going to drag that out here on my report. So this will give me all of my customers. And then let's actually go down and pull our year-to-date sales. So those are all under total sales year to date. There we go. Almost there. Okay, so total sales year to date. And we just drag that on top of the customer. And so what that does then is that gives us our total sales year to date for our customers. So now if we want to take this and let's say we want to make this into a pie chart, we can do that. Now let's uh, create another one that is uh, total sales year to date by items. So I'm going to actually scroll back up here to my items. And you could do this either by item number or item description. And I'm going to do item description in this case. And I also want to throw item classes on here. And then let's do our, again, total sales year to date. And 
And if we want to see that in a bar graph, we can do that. So now we have the ability, if we wanted to, say, limit the item class, we could do that. So I am also going to add, uh, let's, see, let's keep this one up here, and we're just going to scoot that up a little bit. And let's add one more report now. So let's add our item description with extend, actually, let's just do item class with extended prices. So I'm going to run back up here. Sorry for all the scrolling. So we're going to do an item class, and we're going to scroll up and grab our extended prices. And we'll make that a. Okay. And you can add another one if you wanted to. Maybe you wanted to bring customers and extended prices in there. So customers up here. So let's just grab our customer name once more, and we'll put grab that extended price. And we'll pass that on there. And we'll give that a, another graph here. So. Okay, so now we have all of these graphs on here. We can see very quickly where things are at based on the, the selections that we made. We could go into the sales year to date uh, by customer, and if we wanted to, say, limit this by the top 10 customers or top 10 sales. So we could go down into the filter section. We could do less than X number of dollars. We could do a greater than. We could do an is not or blank. And we can do the same thing with customer names. So we could do, whether it's basic filtering, if you wanted to select individual customers specifically, uh, if we wanted to do the top 10, we can do that. And we can <clears throat> and okay, let's see. Let's do that'll work now. And where the value of the items is less than let's say five hundred. So maybe not like 500, go to 250. All right, so I'm going to actually clear that because I do want to show you some of the other functionality here. And I don't want to do a less than. So let's clear that and put this back. So you can see you've got filtering. Um, you have the ability to go in and do different colors and values. You can drag additional fields for the restrictions. But the other really neat thing is when you're working with the uh, Power BI information is that as you click on information within a particular graph, that's going to update the other graphs that you've included with that dashboard. So as an example, if I click on Plaza 1 here, I can now see that on my other graphs, it's showing me and pulling out that data that's specific to that customer plaza one. If I want to look at a particular inventory item, then it's going to refresh and show me the information that's relevant to that inventory item. That's a little harder one to see there, but it's you can see within the customers, which customers have that. Uh, when you mouse over or drill over to the different customers or the different information on your graphs, it's going to refresh based on that graph information. Once you have your dashboard the way that you want it, then you're ready to publish that dashboard out so that other users have access to it. You can share it with other users. And to do that, you're going to click on Publish. And it's going to ask, first of all, if you want to save your changes. And we'll call this GP Reports 2. And click on Save. 
And at that point, then, you're going to get the working on it message, and it is going to be working on publishing that data out. You can choose where you want to publish that, so I'm going to put it out on my workspace. And I'll let you know that it's working on it there. And as soon as it's available then, it should be just shortly, you'll get a message that there was success. Open that up. And it'll be there just shortly. Choose your account, get launched in. And your report will be available for sharing out with other users and put it in different lo shared locations so that other users can grab this data and utilize it also. 